We're at the 25th Croix. We're here with Dan Brew from the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Harvard Medical School. And we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us on a subject that we covered uh, very briefly uh, in, the, in the press conference and maybe we get a little more in detail. But our audience is mostly community and providers, uh, both medical and non-medical, so it covers the gamut. But I think everybody wants to know about where we are with, and, and your subject is broadly neutralizing antibodies, which were uh, are kind of a, a pretty big topic these days, I think, at least from the NIH, you support from that. Uh, to do that work, and we appreciate you taking time to talk about it. So set us up on, on the work that you did. Sure. So uh, our work is geared towards developing ultimately an HIV cure. I think I should start by saying that we have no cure for HIV today, and mm -hmm. there is no HIV cure that's around the corner. Right. So what we're doing is early stage preclinical research uh, to explore different uh, potential HIV eradication strategies mm -hmm. and basically determine which ones are worth pursuing in humans uh, or not. The, 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 the thing that we're, we've been doing is we, we always, uh, through the FDA, we've always come to the sense that we want to approve something individually before we combine it with something else. But it seems to me that, and I always say this, uh, that, that the only way we're going to get a result that's, that's <laughs> profound or successful is if we have combinations that might be synergistic. So it's, it's kind of like a catch-22, mm -hmm. which, how do you get there? Because you don't know what the combinations are going to be that may be synergistic or as opposed to additive. So it's, it's very a, likely that an HIV cure is going to require a multifaceted approach that will require a combination of interventions. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very complex problem. Uh, the uh, latent uh, viral pro, uh, proviral reservoir mm -hmm. uh, it will be very difficult to eradicate. Mm -hmm. And it's very likely that uh, no single agent will be sufficient for that mm -hmm. task. Or maybe even a vector, an approach, or whatever. Yeah. We don't know what, and we keep on saying we don't know what a cure will be looking like because we haven't got one yet. So when we got one, I guess we'll know what a cure looks like. But, it's, but it could be, it, the, the, I guess the thing is, if we get some of these drugs that are being given every, every month or maybe almost every six months or something like that, then you almost have a cure because you're not taking drugs. But, it's, but it, you're not eradicating the virus, which is optimal, but we don't know if that's going to be possible either. That's correct. And so we're not sure where we're going with all of this, but, but to, to not look would be terrible. We've got to keep looking, and I, I value the work that you're doing. Is, so can you tell us uh, where you're at right now in the, in the grand scheme? Because this is in, in rhesus monkeys? Correct. Okay. Okay. So we did a preclinical study in rhesus monkeys in which we were exploring whether a broadly neutralizing antibody combined with an immune stimulant would reduce the viral reservoir and, um, uh, and delay viral rebound after antiretroviral drugs are stopped. Mm -hmm. So the study involved uh, infecting uh, monkeys with an AIDS-like virus and then, and then putting them on antiretroviral therapy mm -hmm. uh, and then giving them either the antibody alone the immune stimulant alone, or both, or neither. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that when we took the animals off drugs, that uh, the animals that received both of the interventions uh, had a substantial delay before virus came back. Mm -hmm. And in just under half the animals, with six months of follow-up so far, then uh, uh, just under half the animals have not yet shown any signs of viral rebound, mm -hmm. whereas all the control animals have. So, um, so what we're seeing is a clear effect in the animal model. Uh, it's not 100%, and I should emphasize we do not know whether this will uh, have a similar effect in humans or not. Uh, but it allows us to further understand how the reservoir is behaving mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and learn from that and, and potentially develop strategies. So you will, this is like you're going to follow them until they show virus? Uh, we'll continue to follow them. Okay. And then at some point you'll sacrifice them and find out where maybe, you know, learn more from that at, at some point? Uh, I think we'll follow them for the next few months and then we'll look at the data and then decide what to do okay. at that point. Well, it's exciting and I, I hope that uh, I'm sure we'll somehow or another, will you be the one that will be presenting the next 
data as on down the line? Uh, uh, we don't have any immediate plans, but but we're happy to. Our team will be happy to share data as it emerges. Because I, I would love I would love to uh, have an opportunity to follow that. I know we yeah. we followed uh, with uh, Tim from the Boston patients, mm -hmm. and uh, we you know down the line they're still learning stuff. Uh, I think the Mississippi baby uh, had a lot of. It's always great to follow this and see because this is the, the efforts towards a cure. So we, everybody works together. There's a sense of collaboratory uh, uh, effort. We even call Absolutely. it the Martin Delaney Collaboratory. Uh, Absolutely. There's not, pr pr proprietary is there, but not, not profound. It's, it's important for us to all know where everybody is so we can learn together. Yeah, we're happy to share updates of this uh, with the community and with the field and the public uh, right. Right. as quickly as we can. Right. Any of the conferences, look me up because we'll definitely want to know where we are. Okay. We'll Thank do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome.